So, I received a couple boxes in today. I guess they're for repairs. I don't know. I'm out of room here. So, I scratched the addresses out for privacy. And we're going to get the letter opener and see what's in this thing. I want to thank Mr. Brett for kicking in some SCSI chips. Mr. B, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. So, we're going to carefully open this puppy. This sucker is sharp. Where did I get this knife? Well, one day I was staying up very late, eating chicken or something probably, and the Home Shopping Network, which is a TV channel here in America, got it where Jesus lives, uh, ran a special on some frost cutlery knives. They're this company that says frost cutlery. It was a whole kit, all sorts of wild looking things for like $99. Now this was in 92 and uh, yeah, so I bought them and I have them all to this day. It came with a sword and everything. Anyway, I got suckered into that. Oh, I know what these are. Dude, thank you so much. So for Mr. Scott R, thank you. I'm writing you from the Thumb of Michigan, where I've lived for the past 27 years. However, I grew up around Altoona, which is you know, a couple hours from me. I enjoy watching your videos, and I appreciate your love of a 35-year-old computer. Now, my first computer was a C64. Several years later, I bought an A2000 when in college, then had residency in Bethlehem. I upgraded to an Amiga 3000, had it until 97 when he went Mac. It's been a Mac user ever since. I love Apple. Last year... I was watching YouTube videos and I stumbled upon your channel and I've been hooked ever since. I thought about buying another 3000, but I decided a vamp to buy a, v a Vampire V4 and a Raspberry Pi. I enjoy digging into the old operating system, demos, playing games. Recently, I decided to upgrade my home computer with a Synology and retire my Drobos. Dr. Robotics. Both run flawlessly. New power supplies. While I hunted down the boxes, I even found some iOmega Zip Discs. I enjoy your enthusiasm and craziness during your videos. Enjoy the Drobos, Mr. Scott. Yeah, I totally forgot about this. I thought this was a 1200 repair, and this is epic, and that's why they were so heavy. So, as you know, I have a Drobo 8-something FS. It's uh, like a NAS. Stick all your discs in. It uses this Beyond RAID technology to... Let you have a JBOT of discs that's sort of RAID protected with their own kind of RAID thing. Mr. Scott had two of these bad boys, and he reached out to me and asked me if I would like to have them. And I said, heck yeah. He said, hey, they're not going to work on modern SMB stuff. I said, it's cool. My network is an Apple X serve from 2006. I'm good. I'm SMB1. Yay, security. Anywho, I uh, we conversed, and dude... Here they are. Let me put this on the ground. I'm going to pull the Drobo box out. This is really cool. And I want to thank him for that. And these will be used because I have just a few hard drives. This is the Drobo uh, 5D. It's a five disc RAID. Front pops off. She's all magnetic. I use these at work all the time. We have the more industrial models. And uh, they're pretty good for what we use them for. So inside the box. This is so cool. Man, I can't thank you enough for this. We get the Drobo setup guide. Go get your Drobo dashboard, which I just happen to have already installed on my wind blows machine. It should be a small box. Yep. And then the Drobo itself. I need to set this down too. I'm sorry. And there's your small box, big storage. Oh, wow. Brand new Zip 100s. Anti-click of death. That is really cool. And there's two of these. That's what the other box is. I have a monster truck Drobo. That's my storage on the X-Serve. So, dude, this is really, really cool. These are USB based. Oh yeah, Thunderbolt adapter. Woohoo! Guess it won't work on my ARM Mac. But we'll see. On a plus note, I should be able to hook this up uh, and get it detected. Man, I gotta put this on the floor again. And here's the unit. You're thinking, wow, that's not big. Yeah, it's a, the box was the big part. So this is magnetically mounted, and you will see you have one, two, three, four, five bays. 
Now this sucker takes standard SATA hard drives. Plug it in sunlight. Give me some energy. Move the knife before you cut yourself. Yep, USB or Thunderbolt. Let me get a hard drive. All right, so I hooked it up USB to my Windows machine. Since I'm old school, I got an 80 gig drive. Woohoo! There we go. So we have this boot initialization going on here. That's the inserted drive, which is in there. This one says 1082 GT640. Drobo just came online, detected itself. I'm waiting for it. So it has an old config on here. No problem. We're waiting for the Drobo to show up, which it just did. So, here is the Drobo. Focus, you stupid camera. 5D. Too many hard drives have been removed. No problem. What we do is we go into Tools, and we say Erase, and Factory Reset, and you have to type the word Erase. E-R-A-S-E. I understand. And restore the factory config. Now, it will reboot the Drobo, wipe the RAID config that it had, and should reappear in just a second. The Drobo itself has gone yellow lights and is initializing. Now, I only have an 80 gig drive in here, and I'm going to show you why. Because I have a 500 gig. Oh, I have a 500 gig. We're going to add to it. Yes, it's not a lot of space, but you can add large hard drives to this. I think up to like 4 terabytes. Standard SATA. So while this thing is doing its thing, this should go green and nothing else. This is more capacity when the Drobos are running. And of course, a power light when it kicks in. So we have one and we're red and it's saying add another drive. So we're green. Okay? Add another drive. All right. Drobo's coming online. Just heard it. It'll take a second to connect the Drobo dashboard here. There we go. We have a Drobo 5D. Would you like to format them? Yep. NTFS. Whatever. 64 terabytes. Yeah. Uh, no. You selected a volume size of 64 terabytes and have 8.9 gig available capacity. Therefore, a single volume will be created. I don't have 64 terabytes. For some reason, I have 9 gigs of space on this 80 gig drive. Let's see what it does. Doesn't do BitLocker. That's fine. It can take 5 minutes to format your drive. While we're waiting on that, this drive says 1082 Hackintosh, uh, December 9th, 2012. I still have that computer, but that's okay. I'm going to peel this label off because. I no longer need that backup. So the Drobo's formatted its drive. So we have a green light. It's going to ask me for more capacity. Drive information it is an 80 gig hard drive. Okay, so it does see the 80 gig. Oh, sorry, it zoomed out. So it does see the 80 gig hard drive. Of course, how it does its RAID volume stuff. It does say add a hard drive. So I'm going to add a hard drive. This is that 80 with tape all over it because that's always good for inserting into a machine. Let me get to 80 gig drive again. Yep. We're rocking hardcore with the old, uh, with the drives. Second drive in, then we'll put the 500 in last. This says Windows 7. I'm going to add this one in too. Now, this is a half height drive. I find it easier if I just hold the button over. So we have, it just told me a drive has been added. I'm going to watch them pop in here, and a 500 is going to be in the next one. So 80. It'll blink orange because it's doing some RAID protection because it has a dynamic volume. Don't remove the disk, it's telling me. You just added a 500 gig drive in slot 3. There it goes online, 500 gig. And it's doing this striping thing. And it'll take all these and give me 580 gigs and then my capacity will be right now about 118 gigs and I'm still growing. So... This will increase as the RAID develops itself on the on the Drobo. And it's doing this. Well, oh, it's already done. Okay. So out of those three drives, I have a hundred I lost a lot because of parity. 118.97. That's not a lot of gigabytes. I know you can get a compact flash card that big or an SD card. 
but I'm rocking old tech for a reason. Tells me what's going on. 80 plus 80 plus 500 is 660 gigabytes of data. Woohoo! 614. But reserved for expansion, 391 gigs. Used for protection, 104 gigs. And overhead, 260.85 megabytes. That's not a lot of overhead. Uh, this reserve for expansion means when I get close, it'll use this space up and I'll get more. So, yeah, 614 gig actual because, again, 280s and a 500. I have larger drives. I just have to dig them out of the hole. Uh. So, what can I do with this? Now, it's doing its thing. We can put the magnetic cover back on. And yes, I can and will put some decent drives in here. You get this nice little display. It says Drobo. Uh, that stands for Dr. Robotics, by the way, and you'll see your status lights and capacity gauge as you use it. This in the lower right is activity. So what I'm going to do is close this dashboard here. And this volume should be mounted as drive letter G. There it is. But it tells me I have 64 terabytes of available data. That's like a falsity because you can see I don't have 64 terabytes. We know it has 100 and whatever. The idea is that's the maximum formatted capacity of this drive. Now what I'm going to do is plug my damn camera back in. Cause and this is a bunch of image. Here's a mini MIG 6 gig image. I'm just going to copy that over. And you can see it is doing its thing. You can't see anything. So we're copying data. Now I'm USB 2. Now I'll have a 3 cable. Uh, it's going to take 2 minutes and 45 seconds to copy 6 gigs. Not incredible speed, but for an archival, let it rip all night, boom, your data is safe, you're good to go. So it's rolling along at 40 megabytes per second under USB 2 speeds. If I get an ultra cable or hook it up Thunderbolt, we'll be better. The issue is this, I don't think there's Drobo dashboard tools for Linux. I don't even know if Drobo is still around as a company. Now once the RAID protection uh, finishes, of course, it would be faster. It's chunking along quite fine for me. I'm going to look and see if there's a... I don't know what that was. Somebody throwing a spoon in the sink. Uh, let's see if there's the Drobo tools for Linux. So it's available for Linux, but it's so old my Linux is not uh, not friendly with it. So I'm trying to hack it and uh, make it work. The Drobo drives just spun down. It is plugged in, but I don't think it likes... USB type C. It's supposed to report as a USB disk if I plug it in directly. We'll see. Huh? Yes, it does. The Drobo tools won't be available, but uh, you know, we'll see. I'm running an update and it just appeared. There's the Drobo. Unable to access Drobo. An operation is pending. Please wait. Well, could it be the 1300 megs of updates or my phone going off? I don't know. Oh, Drobo just appeared and there's the stuff. So I can use it, configure it on a PC, and use it on a Linux machine. There's my mini MIG. Let me unzip it. There it is. Cool. Let's extract this to the Drobo. Distracting. Yeah, I hear it going off. There's the activity light in green. Yay, we're in business. And I have a backup solution for all my footage and big stuff once I get some hard drives for this thing. One terabyte drives are pretty cheap. Five terabytes is enough for me. Yeah, can I go and buy a USB drive that is five terabytes for like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks? Probably. Do I have enough hard drives on the other side? Maybe? I don't know. Now, it's not a lot of space for 2023 technology, but I'm not in 2023. I identify as 1994, so this would be incredible. So, just a quick update and a thank you to Mr. Scott for sending these Drobos in. They will be used, and you will be seeing them on the channel periodically as the camera pans into their frame. That's all I got for now. That's a quick update and a very short, short video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you learn something.
know if I'm funny, you bastard.